And I, you know, I was just ready. And I know that you follow a little bit of like Abraham and, yes. and uh, Esther Hicks. And so she always says, you know, getting ready to be ready to be ready. And I think that's just what I've done for years. And then I was ready and I said, okay, this is where I want to go and I'm ready to invest. And I just knew that you and and playing the foundation was the program, was, was sort of where I needed to go in terms of trying to figure things out. Starting a new career in retirement doesn't have to be a nightmare. In fact, if you've been thinking about growing your jewelry business and figuring out how to get it going and building traction, especially when you're about to retire from your lifelong career, well, you are going to love this episode today. Hey there, I'm Tracy Matthews. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy, and I help jewelry brands launch, grow, and scale successful six, multiple six, and seven figures using my methodology called the Desired Brand Effect. And I'm excited to be here today to talk to a jewelry maker named Rena Lubin. Rena designs nature-inspired jewelry. She spent her career as a physical therapist, and now she is in retirement and growing her jewelry business and just really excited about how it's going. In fact, she even talks about on this episode about how she was so surprised when she followed some of our strategies and started getting random strangers buying from her on her website. So if you wanna learn more about Rena's story and listen to how she's building her business in retirement, make sure that you listen to this episode. Let's dive in right away. Well, I'm really excited to be interviewing another Laying the Foundation student. I have Rena Lubin here of Pure Whimsy Jewelry. Rena, welcome. Hi, thank you, Tracy. Good to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you today a little bit about your journey into the jewelry, into jewelry and to learn a little bit more about your path and to share with people who are listening who might be thinking about joining Laying the Foundation just a little bit more about how you benefited from the program. Does that sound cool? Yeah, yeah. So... First of all, I will say that I've followed you and your podcast for years, <laughs> um, like a long time on and off, not like straight through. I would always sort of come back to it and then go away. I was working as a physical therapist and then a little bit over a year, almost a year and a half ago, I retired and, you know, listening to the podcast and just feeling like I was spinning my wheels and I, you know, I was just ready. And I know that you follow a little bit of like Abraham and, yes. and uh, Esther Hicks. And so she always says, you know, getting ready to be ready to be ready. And I think that's just what I've done for years. And then I was ready and I said, okay, this is where I want to go. And I'm ready to invest. And I just knew that you and, and playing the foundation was the program, was, was sort of where I needed to go in terms of trying to figure things out. That's so exciting. Well, thanks for sharing all that up front. I love that. That's amazing. And I love that you talked about Esther Hicks and Abraham Hicks because I listen to them all the time on my commute over to the, my work office. Like this is kind of an apartment, but I use it to work out of so I can stage video. And it's awesome. I was, I was just listening to an interview that she did with Reed Tracy mm -hmm. of Hay House. And it was right after Jerry passed away. Yeah. And she was talking I'm about sure this exercise. It. Did you hear that? Yeah, I've heard, I've probably heard that interview a couple of times. It's quite a few years old, but it's, yeah, the napkin, you know, yeah. the, and when she does that, when that's, the, that's always like my issues, even, even now it's so much better with laying the foundation is the time thing, yeah. you know, like there's just, you know, you don't have enough time or, oh, or you don't have enough of something, you know? So it, yeah, well, the cool part about that is so I'll explain what the napkin thing is because I, I just opened my journal this morning. It's funny that you say that and I came up to a page. It's like, what can I take care of today? And what can the universe take care of for me? Something along those lines. And I was it's just brilliant because anytime you're overwhelmed, you can identify like what are the most important things that you need to be doing that just to make your day great. And then what can you just release and let the universe take care of for yourself? And that goes with, I think, with any problem that we're having, because sometimes I truly do believe that sometimes big problems come up, like in business and life, like, you know, it's, it's funny how things keep like, I, I've been in a really big cycle of shedding right now. And so it's like, things keep coming up and I'm like, okay, what is this teaching me? What do I need to learn? Why, how is this on purpose for my highest good? And like, how is this actually serving me? And so 
I'm glad that you brought this up because this is a great topic for us to talk a little bit more about on this conversation because you know things happen for a reason you're listening to this podcast for a reason mm -hmm. you found flourish and thrive for a reason and if you follow the threads and understand like what the reason is and start to like let the universe unfold that for you bigger things open up which is really cool right yeah absolutely absolutely i'm so yeah. glad you said that like yeah right? that's great yeah yeah so what so why did you leave your job as a physical therapist was it just that you were retiring and like you were done yeah. or was it something else? i was done yeah, no, no, no. I was retiring. I was uh, 32 years. <laughs> I was done. It's a long time. It was great. Um, it's a creative field. I need, you know, but I've always been an artist too. I mean, painted and drew as a, as a kid and even into adulthood, you know, stained glass, you name it. I've done it for the most part. But when I found metal smithing, yeah. I just knew, you know, I, you know, and I have like thousands of dollars worth of, you know, probably tens of thousands of equipment now. Mm -hmm. and like, you know, I just knew Yeah, it's one of those things. So it's so fun to play with fire too. There's something about it, like in a safe environment, <laughs> obviously, like, you know, with a, a fire extinguisher nearby. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> Soldering can be frustrating, but it's one of my favorite things to do. Absolutely. Super fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. I've always thought like, I finally got rid of my torch. I remember this specifically. I was moving out of my apartment in the West Village in New York City, and then was moving to a new apartment in Hudson Yards. And it was kind of like that I made it apartment. I'm like, things are going great. Like I'm kind of hitting my financial goals and stuff like that. And I was cleaning out my storage and there was like all these jewelry tools. And I remember posting it in the, in her Facebook group for Flourish and Thrive. And one of our students came up and picked up my safe. She came and like another student came and bought like all my soldering equipment. Like I was really bummed to let it go, but I'm kind of like, it's been sitting here for like seven years and I haven't touched it. I'm probably not going to set anything up anytime soon. I miss it, but that was a chapter for me. Um, so back to you, <laughs> how are you currently selling your jewelry? So I am doing sort of a little bit of everything. I started, you know, friends and family, more friends and family. I don't have a huge family when I lived in Anchorage. And then I worked up the nerve to go into a local gallery. And this is actually really cool. So I, yeah, and they took my stuff. And initially it, it, it's, this is all sort of part, part of that learning curve. I would sell maybe two pieces a month, but I started when I drop off new stuff. I really would start to talk to the gallery owner and we became good friends. So anybody in Anchorage, can, can I say the name of the gallery? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, okay. So Dos Manos Gallery and Kara and Kara's one of the owners and just wonderful. And, you know, she really knew her clientele. And then gradually, you know, like I started selling 10 to 15 pieces a month, you know, versus two. And then I just threw up a website, <laughs> you know, did a Squarespace, so I already had, you know, website. And I had been doing some, some live show, you know, live things here and there, but of course nobody found my website. I could barely find my website. There was no SEO on it, which at the time I had no idea what SEO was. I didn't know. So the only people that went to my website who are the people who were like, you know, specifically looking for me. So then I, did, I sort of ended up mostly selling in the gallery and just uh, people would actually buy jewelry off of me, which was just awesome. Like, and then yeah. just, you know, people that I knew and I was in a bank once and a woman bought my earrings off of me. I was opening, I was actually opening up an account for my square, for my charger, for the reader. Oh, you know, I was finally, yeah. yeah. And she bought the earrings. So now I'm really, my goal is to increase those website sales. And so, so now website is more so an Instagram. Those are other avenues. I definitely have made some nice sales and met some wonderful, wonderful people and clients that I would call friends on Instagram as well. Oh, that's so great. I love that. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper to, in that in a moment, but are you just selling in the one gallery or do you have other galleries that you sell? To? No, I have, I have, a, I have quite a few in Alaska. So we've since left Alaska. My husband wasn't doing well. He ended up getting diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and it I'm just, sorry. yeah, it's, it's, he's doing great. The environment was just a little too, too tough. It, yeah. The cold, the dark, the ice, like yeah. they don't plow their roads for the yeah. sidewalks or the roads. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was just time. It was time to leave, but yeah. So I have like 
you know, I've had some have come, some have gone, you know, five to six galleries in Alaska. I've got a gal in New Hampshire and then Jackson Hole also. Wonderful. And then I'm working on something here. It's a co-op gallery. I, it's one of those things I, I've been invited to join. I just have to decide, <laughs> you know, am I ready? Yeah. Where do you live now? Now I'm in Gainesville, Florida, North Central Florida. It's more the country club life, right? <laughs> Which is good for my husband. <laughs> so yeah, it's been good. It's been good. So how did you build momentum in the beginning when you were just starting? Because it sounds like you kind of were like winging it as you were going like, what did yeah. you do? <laughs> I was winging it. <laughs> I was totally winging it. And that's, that was part of what we finally got me to sort of make, you know, it was a financial investment to make that investment and laying the foundation. I, I had sort of made the commitment to my jewelry. I was spending a lot of time on Instagram. I was working on my website and still for the most part, well, I was making, starting to build sales on Instagram, not on my website. Not really. And most, I mean, some night, still nice sales on the galleries. They really are what kept me going mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And I just, there were a couple of things. I felt like A, I was spinning my wheels, wasting a lot of time. B, I just wasn't really proud. Like I wasn't, like I looked at my business and it wasn't what I wanted. I mean, I feel like I have an artistic eye. I, I felt like I'd heard you talk about collections and I felt like my work was a bit all over the place. Yeah. And so I wasn't happy with that, you know, I, you know, just, just sort of all of that. I just didn't really have a roadmap. I didn't have clarity. And so it didn't feel good. You know, it just didn't feel good. And I finally just, again, I was ready to be ready. And I finally just said, F it. <laughs> I don't care if I make this money back. I, I need to do this for me, you know, not, not so, I mean, obviously the, you want to make your money back. Cause then I also paid somebody to do my website and, and I'm, and it, and it's paid off. It has, but it, you know, I just needed to feel, I wanted to feel good about everything I was doing. So, okay. So it sounds like you were like, you just kind of didn't have a lot of direction in what you were doing. Yeah. You were spending a lot of time trying to figure things out and you just wanted someone to point you in the, the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I needed clarity. So I needed that roadmap, that clarity, you know, how do I make this work and not waste a lot of time? I wasn't wasting money. I'm, I'm really good about that. I'm, I'm good at not over keeping inventory and all that stuff. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I had, so um, I have an amazing studio, which I don't, it's, we have a mother-in-law suite that's attached to the house, but not in the house. It's got a full bath. Oh, great. So I don't pay rent on my studio, which is very helpful, but it's a, it's a full studio. So, so I was okay there, but yeah, I just knew I, I, this was my business. I wanted to own it and I wanted it. I wanted it to be something I was really proud of. So yeah. how do you feel about it right now? Oh, so much better. So, and it's, and, and what I'm coming to realize is obviously it's always going to be evolving. I absolutely love my website. I'm excited for the website review. I'm sure that there's still things, but I spent a lot of time in laying the foundation on chapter or module six, a yes. lot of time. It, it slowed me down, but in a good way, you know, partly I paid somebody. And so, you know, they take longer than they say they took about two months to migrate. So I started on Square, which had no, literally had no SEO. And then mm -hmm. when they bought Weebly or, or combined with Weebly, mm -hmm. I did Weeb the Weebly site and they did have SEO, but still nobody really found me, you know, minimal. So that was the second investment, you know, I invested in the program and I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do this and I want more direct website sales, I need to switch to Shopify. And it's been, I've loved Shopify. I really have. It's been great. And, you know, I never had an FAQ page. I never had a policy, like all yeah. those other pages. I never had any of that, you know? So I just feel like it's a really professional, beautiful site. So, That's and amazing. I have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, it takes time, but you know, I enjoy it. That's so, so great. Do you have a before of your site? I interviewed someone no. else last week uh -uh. and she sent me a before and after of her website after learning I the foundation. I should have done that. 
Here's, I can tell you how to do it. Go to the waybackmachine.org. The way, waybackmachine.org. Yeah, I'll send okay. it to you after. And okay, you can find a screenshot you. of your previous website based on the date that before, if you look for it, the yeah, date yeah. before you transferred over. And okay. if you, if you're able to find it, send it over and I'll post it in the blog post for this and we can okay. see it before and after. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, so for anyone who was listening and you're wondering what she was talking about, module six, module six is all about website development and setting your website up the right way. We even offered, have a bonus <clears throat> in there. To, if you want to shop, do a DIY Shopify site, Lauren, our, one of our LTF coaches and desire brand coaches over here is a Shopify expert. And she created this training so that you can easily set up your own Shopify store and not have to stress out about hiring someone if you don't have the funds. Like, and so we're, we want to help you do that. And that's included in the program, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So my next question for you is, so you joined Lane the foundation, you, it sounds like you got a lot of benefit out of it. I want to know like some of the specific results, like, how are you feeling now? How's your business doing? what's happening and what was your experience while taking the Lean the Foundation program? How is it different? It's different in a lot of ways. I mean, I'm really honing in again, this will probably be something I'll always be doing, but really honing in on collections, you know, um, the, the website was huge. So, um, I probably, you know, Oh gosh, I get actually now, and it wasn't right at the beginning. I mean, definitely this Christmas season, I definitely got organic traffic. And I just, even after Christmas, I had a gal email me through my website. Oh, I see this is, I do a couple of things that are just um, like, you know, for Christmas mm -hmm. season or just winter, like some snowflakes and these little gnomes. Anyway, one of the gnomes, um, I, it was a mistake actually on the website. It was out of stock, but I make everything for the most part to order. Mm -hmm. Like the, the bulk of my just regular stuff on the website. And then I've got collections that are, you know, get launched. But anyway, so she got in touch with me and I'm like, oh, you know, I'd be, be, I didn't tell her that was a mistake. I just said, you know, it's seasonal. I'd be happy to make you one, but I would never get any organic. Um, I got another one, you know, right before Christmas, a man wanting to get sort of mountain ocean theme are my two big niches, especially mountain, but nature themed in general. Anyway, he did a custom mountain and bear pendant for his wife. You know, we email. And so I would never get these were just, comp they didn't find me on Instagram. Just it random just people finding you. Totally organic, like, which is what I want. Yeah. That's so so great. I, I'm super excited about that. That's like a huge thing. I've definitely gotten organic sales and I just have a sense that that'll keep growing. You know, finally that's starting to go around. My sales overall have increased for sure. You know, a good 20, by? 20, 30%, but enough. It's definitely been significant enough. And yeah. So, so again, that's, it's paid off, you know. So your to, sales have grown, as you mentioned, 20 to 30% since May. So, yeah. And not even since May, really since launching, well, a little bit before launching the new website, but you know, early on your, those first months, you have to realize, I mean, you're absorbing this material. You're still figuring it out, but at yeah. least you have that roadmap. It's like, oh, okay, what is, what is my why? Like, those are my mm. favorite modules. What's my why? I mean, I can't say dream client was my favorite because it's still hard, but it's so necessary. But I love the what's my why and, you know, what, what am I all about? Why am I doing this? And I love the like module two and all of those. And then the website. So, yeah, so you're still figuring it out. So it's really probably been maybe since August, Yeah, you know, that's maybe, fantastic. maybe a little earlier, maybe July. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's yeah. Awesome. So the, so the first three months, probably not, but again, you're just implementing. So. And how is your experience with the coaching and the community? It's good. It's good. I love the coaches. I just love them as people. They're just so dear and yes. they're great coaches. Yeah. So I try and get on as many calls as I can. And if I don't get on the call, just because the time's not good, I listen to the, I put my headphones in and just listen to the replay. So I usually can pick something up from that. Um, yeah, they're great. That's amazing. So is, is there anything else that shifted for you since taking the program? 
I think, you know, just those, the, the tangible things are, you know, really having guidance and clarity, although, you know, it, that's ever evolving, especially on the collections and making pieces and mm -hmm. how to do some of those things. I'm, right now, I'm really trying to work on, okay, how do I create more urgency? I see, and I'm not comparing myself, but I see some of these other jewelry people on Instagram who just, they do these collection drops and it seems like they all sell out right away. Ooh, that's something else. I've only started the collection drop since doing Lay of the Foundation. And I did ask some questions um, to the coaches and one collection completely sold out and others I sold probably at least half. I'm increasing my emails. That's, you know, trying to get those, get those up and doing probably at least two a month before I was doing one a month. Uh, and then doing the lead up. So I was fortunate enough when I signed up, I got the email bundle as a bonus. Mm -hmm. So that was very helpful for awesome. the lead. I don't do as many emails as you put out there <laughs> on yeah. the lead up to a drop. I do like three, <laughs> three, maybe four. So it's definitely increased my sales. And then, so, and I'd say some of the, I've done three collections, the other two collections, I sold at least half of them, you know, one was eight pieces, maybe I've sold four or five. Yeah. So amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my last question for you before we wrap this up is what would you say to someone who's thinking about joining laying the foundation and they're maybe on the fence? Right. Well, the first thing I, you know, they have to decide why they're joining, why they would yeah. do anything. There's, there's, there's an investment, there's a financial investment, but there's a time investment too. So if you're not, if you don't, like you said, you know, you know, a million times, mm -hmm. if you don't do the work, mm -hmm. then, I mean, the nice thing is the program's always there. I do see yeah. some on the community. People said, oh, I bought this a year ago. I had to put it aside and now I'm coming back. So once you have the program, you have the program. And yeah. so that's always good. It will just give you great direction. I don't think you can go wrong if you do the work. Yeah. You know, it will give you clarity. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure different people get different different things out of it. You know, we all get different things out of it. So those are the big things for me that I'm sure would help other other people too. The other thing that I will definitely say, one of my hesitations in the in the past was, well, I don't want to grow to the point that I want to hire people. That, that's not what I want, uh, but I know I can, I'm making, I know that I'm making a lot of jewelry that I'm not selling. You know, I wanted to be able to sell all the jewelry I can comfortably make. And I wasn't doing that and feel good about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely getting, getting much closer to that now. So like, don't let that hold you back. You know, if you're not looking to make the six figures, if you, if mm -hmm. you're like a, a solo artist, that's okay. You know, it took me a while to realize that like, oh, I can still get a lot out of this. I don't need to be this high-end jewelry designer or fine jeweler or, and, and it's funny because also in the community, now I see a lot of people, they might post their stuff or whatever, and they're doing bead work and they've joined, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is fantastic. I mean, that, that's my point. Like you could be any kind of jewelry maker, you know, and anywhere on the journey and, and your goals can be whatever your goals are, but that's why knowing why you would want to do it's important, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. So to clarify just a little bit more about what you said, you feel that the program is great for people who want to build a lifestyle business who don't necessarily want to go grow super big. Right. And, you know, we use the marker of six figures. Cause I do believe that someone who who, you know, wants to put in the time and work. Everyone's at a different phase in your life. You're like right. more in, you know, you've retired from your career and this is something right. that you're doing as like a business that you're right. enjoying and stuff like that. But for people who do want to grow, it helps with that, but it also helps people just get like increase their sales, create time structure, structure in their business and help them with their branding and their messaging and all those things. Exactly. Well. Yeah. The branding was big too. I totally rebranded. Love my branding, my new <laughs> branding. Awesome. Yeah, Yay. yeah. It's been fun. It can really, like, a lot of the stuff in the program, I mean, we're creatives, right? Yes. Everybody who would join this are creatives. And a lot of it is really creative work to do, which yes. for me made it, actually, a lot of it was fun work, you yeah. know? So, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. 
Rena, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story. Yeah, I appreciate thank you. you. So excited. I got to like meet you and talk to you. <laughs> That's very exciting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for watching the show today. I am so thrilled to be here every single week. Make sure that if you enjoyed this, that you subscribe to our channel and you like the video and share with me in the comments your biggest takeaway. And if you've been thinking about building your jewelry business in retirement or just starting a jewelry business in general, then I'd love to invite you to join our Laying the Foundation program. This program has helped over 8,500 students launch, grow and scale successful businesses, upwards of six figures. And we wanna help you Get your brand out there, stand out in a saturated market, and do the things for your marketing that are actually going to move the needle and get results in the simplest way possible. If that sounds good, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash LTF and check out the program for yourself.